Thanks for tuning in to the IGM podcast. We're so glad you've decided to explore God's word with us. We look forward to connecting with you in email at info at or online at our website, www.integritygm.com. We hope this podcast encourages you to grow in the knowledge of God through his word. Be blessed. Blessings today and blessings to everyone in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Today we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 11. The last verse of chapter 10 says, But as for Israel, he says, God says, All the day long I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. And that is a quote from Isaiah chapter 65 verse 2. That is the context in which we're flowing into about the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, and about God's faithfulness to the people of Israel that we're going to see as we go through chapter 11, that there's always been a remnant, and there has always been a plan of God to bring his salvation in totality to the whole nation. And let's start in verse 1 of chapter 11. Today I have Laura with me and also Alan, and we're going to be discussing and looking at this together. And remember, the most important thing about everything that we do is original intent of Scripture. We say it all the time. We're looking at what God is saying through Paul to the believers at Rome, that at this point are more Gentile background believers, and he's writing to a group of people that he's not familiar with. He knows of their reputation and of their faith, but Paul has never been to Rome. And because of this, it's unlike his other letters that we studied prior to Romans. He had a personal relationship with the people in all of these churches that he's writing to. But at this point, he's anticipating on going to Rome, but he doesn't have that personal connection with the believers. In chapters 9, 10, and 11, it's all about the Israel according to the flesh and the Israel according to the promise. And now we're going to focus upon the Israel according to the flesh, and we're going to see that God has a promise for the Israel according to the flesh. Verse 1, Paul says, I say then, God has not rejected his people, has he? That is a question that Paul asks, and it's a question that has been asked throughout the centuries about the Jewish people. And remember here, contextually, he's talking about an obstinate and disobedient people. God has not rejected his people. They are described as the people of God. And he asks the question, has he? May it never be. God has always had a plan of salvation for his people, the people that are the natural descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, that God established a covenant with Abraham and the people of faith. Abraham was chosen by God's grace through faith, and this covenant has come to him and his descendants, and the law was given to the people of faith so that they would be a light to the nations, but they rejected his law over and over as a people, but there was always a remnant, a remnant of people that had faith in God, and the righteous shall live by faith. And we're going to see that concept here. But as we look at verse 1, I say then, God has not rejected his people, has he? May it never be. God has not rejected the nation of Israel. He has not rejected the Jewish people. He has a plan of redemption for the world, but he also has a plan of redemption for the people that rejected his Messiah, a day of fulfillment that's going to come to them. He says, may it never be. For I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. What Paul is saying to the Roman believers, I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite according to the flesh. You remember if you go back to chapter 9, the first few verses, he would be willing to give up his own salvation, that his own countrymen, Israelites, people of the same flesh, could come to know the Lord Jesus Christ if it was possible. But he is saying at this point, I'm an Israelite. Who do you think I am? I am of the tribe of Benjamin. I am an Israelite. Verse 2, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. 
Again, we see the context of predestination is based upon the foreknowledge of God. It is not an arbitrary choosing, but is based upon God's foreknowledge. So he says, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel. Who's pleading with God? Elijah is. Now, Elijah's thinking he's the only one that is faithful to God at this point, and he's pleading to God against the nation of Israel who are the natural descendants of Abraham. But remember, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. He foreknew Elijah, and he knew about the 7,000 that had not bowed their knee to Baal. God knew this. Let's continue. Verse 3, Lord They have killed your prophets, they have torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they are seeking my life. That is a reference to 1 Kings chapter 19. So what is Elijah saying? I'm the only one that's left. I'm the only one that is faithful unto God. There's nobody else. God, it's time for you to deal with the people of Israel. Verse 4, but what is the divine response to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. And that's from 1 Kings chapter 19. So what God is saying, Elijah, you're not the only one. I know who is out there. I know that there are 7,000 men that are just like you, and this is representative of a remnant of believers, a people of faith that are not willing to be idol worships among the natural descendants of Israel that are saying that we believe in the one true God, and we are not going to be unfaithful to our God and bow our knees to Baal. And you look at that, God knows all things. God knows what's in the hearts of men. God knows which individuals are faithful unto him. And he is saying to Elijah, there are more faithful among the descendants of Israel, and here it's in the context of the northern kingdom, than you, Elijah. You think that you're the only one, but there's many more than just you. I think I was thinking about Scott, and maybe it's something to bring up for someone that's newer to the, the podcast, but Christian was a word created, you know, later on you know, in the first century, I believe. So Paul is a follower of Christ. He's Jewish. He's an Israelite. All of the writers of the New Testament were Jewish background believers, Israelites. But you can even see now that Paul is having to address this sort of Gentile congregation in Romans to talk about, yes, they're not been forsaken by God, that they are still the Israel according to the flesh. And I think we've seen that creep in more and more as time has gone by, sort of, oh, we're Christian. But no, if you're Israelite, you're Israelite. You're Jewish, and you're a follower of the Messiah. If you're anything else, you're a Gentile, you're a follower of the Messiah. You know, there's no differentiation between Israelite and Gentile, other than Israelites are the people that are chosen according to the flesh, and they're still chosen, and Paul's backing that up. How could he have forsaken the Israelites and the Jewish people He couldn't have, because Paul wouldn't be writing this letter, because Paul is obviously being used by God to do mighty things to write a lot of the New Testament. So I just think it's it's interesting, you know, you hear, oh, you know, Jew and Christian, but that's kind of a made-up term later on. It's really followers of Christ. And even now, the early church, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were against Jesus. The majority of them were against him. The majority of the Jews and the Israelites were against what Jesus was teaching, because they couldn't understand it. But that's not to say that God had forsaken them. They just didn't understand at that time. Yeah, I would say they rejected the message, and because they did not know the Father, they had created their own power structures and created a system, especially the Pharisees that did not even exist in their own scriptures. And their rejection of the Son was because they did not know the Father. And Jesus is very clear of this as he goes through the Gospels. If you would have known the Father, you would know who I am, that I am the one that is sent by the Father. Now, as we go to, now to go back and to look at what you're saying about the historical understanding of Christian in the first century, you have to look at the word Christian is first being used in the city of Antioch as the gospel was being preached to the Greek speakers 
And when I say Greek speakers, I'm talking about Jewish Greek speakers in the city of Antioch because there they were still Jews and the gospel was being presented to them in the Greek language. And we're looking at Hellenistic Jews. And in that city, people of the city started mocking these Jews that became believers in the Jewish Messiah and who is the Christ. Remember the word Christos means the anointed one in the Greek language. In the Hebrew language, it is the Messiah. So at, at Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. And what that means is that they're not leaving Judaism. They're not leaving the Jewish faith and embracing another faith. What they are doing is they are truly practicing biblical Judaism through the Messiah. And they're not part of the rabbinical system. They're not part of the oral law. They are seeing the fulfillment of the law of Moses through the Messiah, and they're standing complete in him. And people within the city, historically, it was used as a mocking term to call them Christians. Now, later on in history, the word Christian is being used more and more. But in the New Covenant scriptures, the word Christian is only used three times in the writings of Peter once and twice in the book of Acts. So what we're dealing with, these are Jews. This is a Jewish faith from the Jewish Messiah, a Jewish new covenant scriptures that is going out with a new covenant that was promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. And it is going forth, and it's not as the word of God has failed. Because it was always about a promise, Romans chapter 9. But now we see it has not failed for the Jewish people as well. And you think about this. Yes, they are rejecting the Messiah, but there is a remnant. And it's very similar to the days of Elijah. And he is saying, even at the time of Elijah, he felt like he was the only one. Now you look at Paul. He may think, I'm one of the only ones, but Paul knows that's not true. All around him, most of the believers in the world are Jewish believers. And they're proclaiming Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ. And they're taking the gospel not just to the Jews, but to the Gentiles as well, which was a promise that God had for the nations, for the Gentiles. So when we look at here, now he's focusing on the Israel according to the flesh. Look at verse 5. In the same way then, there has also come to be at the present time a remnant of according to God's gracious choice. There's where he ties it in together. Just like the day of Elijah, there was a remnant. He felt like he was the only one, but God knew better. He knows all things. And he says, Elijah, there's 7,000 more that are just like you. And now Paul is saying, in the same way then, there has also come to be at the present time. What is the present time? 57 AD here a remnant according to God's gracious choice, a remnant among the Jewish people. Who is this remnant? And if you're listening, Peter, Paul, Andrew, Johanan, or John, you're looking at these early disciples. You're looking at uh, Matthias, who took Judas' place. You're looking at all the 12 apostles. They are part of that remnant. You're looking at the 120 on the day of Shavuot or Pentecost. They were all Jewish. You look at the 3,000 that were saved on the day of Pentecost. They're all Jewish. When you go through the book of Acts, we do not come to the first Gentile coming to faith until we come to Acts chapter 10. And then the great explosion of faith among the Gentiles is Acts chapters 13 and 14. So when we look at this, we're seeing that this remnant is all over of Jews within synagogues, Jews that are being kicked out of synagogues sometimes. Remember Paul and other Jewish believers in Corinth were kicked out of the synagogue, but they go to the house of Crispus. The leader of the synagogue had become a believer. Who are these individuals? They're remnant that are saved by the grace of God, the natural descendants from Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, that now they're embracing their own Messiah. Now, all of this is by God's grace. Grace is the understanding that he chooses to come and to show his grace to us, just like he did to Abraham. 
just like he did to Elijah and the 7,000. This is by God's grace. It's a gracious choice. And let's read verse 6. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. It has always been on the basis of God's grace, never on the basis of our works. That is Romans chapter 4. It has always been God coming to us. God chose Abraham, and it's not because he was a good person. It's because of God's grace, his choosing, and Abraham responded by faith. So are the remnant of this day among the Jewish people. It's by God's gracious choice that he is bringing the gospel to them, and by faith they are receiving the good news. And it's a remnant. It's not in totality of the whole nation at this time, but it is a remnant of believers like Paul and Peter and John and Andrew and Yaakov and others that are coming to faith in their own Messiah. And they are really the evidence that God has not rejected his people. Is, that's such a great point that that is what Paul is saying. This is the evidence of God not rejecting his people because of the remnant, just like in the day of Elijah, and just like the 7,000 that had not bowed down to Baal. In the same way, the remnant among the natural descendants, the natural branches that are coming from Abraham, have not gone in rejection of their Messiah, but by faith they have received their Messiah. Now that remnant is showing the faithfulness of God to the Israel according to the flesh, that as we get to the end of this chapter, there is a great promise that is consistent with Scripture about the nation, the people coming to know their God through their Messiah. So praise God for that. Let's look at verses 7 through 10, and then we will finish this recording. What then? Question mark. What Israel is seeking, it has not obtained. But those who were chosen obtained it. How? Gracious choice is coming to them. And the rest were hardened. Who were chosen, who obtained it, this remnant among the Jews. And the rest were hardened. But remember, they were hardened with the same truth. Some received it by faith. Others were hardened by the truth of the gospel, just as it is written. And in the next three scripture verses, he's going to be quoting from Deuteronomy 29, Isaiah 29, also in Psalm 69. Let's look at these three scripture verses and Let's just see how the people of God, the people of the flesh, how that their eyes could not see and their ears could not hear. But remember, it was always with the truth being presented to them. It says in verse 8, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes to see not and ears to hear not, down to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap and a stumbling block, and a retribution to them. Let their eyes be darkened to see not, and bend their backs forever. As we look at these three verses, it is always in the context of God's faithfulness, God's truth that is coming to the nation of Israel, to the people of God. Now, we know that there is a remnant that understands and a remnant that believes and their eyes are open and their ears are open and they are faithful to God, just like Elijah was. But many times when we look back into the history of Israel, the truth is giving them the hardness of heart where they do not see and their ears are not opened and they cannot hear and they cannot see the faithfulness of God that is right in front of them and then this comes back upon them. God is always faithful to the people that he chose. But through the whole history of Israel, there was always a remnant, a remnant that did see, a remnant that did hear, a remnant that hearts were open to the truth and listened to the message of the prophets. And that is showing God's faithfulness to the Israel according to the flesh. But in general, over and over, 
just like when we look back at chapter 10, verse 21, when we look back on the history of the nation of Israel, he says, and quoting from Isaiah 65, verse 2, but as for Israel, he says, God says, all the day long I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. And we see that through the history of the nation of Israel. But God has not rejected his people, has he? May it never be. Through all of that history, there were people that were descendants of Abraham, according to the flesh, that were faithful unto God. There was always a faithful remnant. Scott, sorry to go back, but on verse 7, when it says, What then... What Israel is seeking, it has not obtained. Is that in reference to them seeking after salvation, but coming about it in the wrong way? Yes, most definitely. If you look back into the context that they were seeking to know God's salvation, to have a relationship with God, but it was not according with knowledge. They have a zeal for God, but not in accordance with knowledge or truth. For not knowing about God's righteousness, talking about the Jewish people, and seeking to establish their own. Their own what? Their own righteousness. They did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. I'm quoting from chapter 10 of Romans, verses 2 and 3. So when you look at that, yes, they are wanting to have God's righteousness, but they're seeking to have this righteousness by their own merits, by their own works. And that's not how the righteousness of God has been made known. The righteousness of God has been manifested that was witnessed by the law and the prophets through his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, through his Messiah, this righteousness that comes by faith in Yeshua. This is God's righteousness. And all have sinned, Jew and Gentile alike. All of us are separated from God because of our sin. And by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in the sight of God. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested. What is that righteousness? Through his son, through his propitiation, his atoning sacrifice that has come to the Jewish people. And there was a remnant that believed and received the righteousness of God. But there were others that represent the majority, that were seeking to have their own righteousness based upon their own works and their own merits. And our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. That's what Isaiah says. And so, yes, it's a great question. What is that talking about? But it's talking about them not obtaining righteousness because they're not coming through God's righteousness. They want to come through their own righteousness. And for everyone that's listening, I do not want to approach God, who is holy in every aspect of who he is, in my righteousness. Amen. I want to come to him in his righteousness, and that righteousness is through his son, the Messiah, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Put your faith and trust in him. God's grace has come to you. Is your heart going to be hardened, or is it going to be opened up, and are you going to Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for your forgiveness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for this time together in your word. I pray that you will use this recording and let the word of God go forth and let it go out, and your word never returns void. It always accomplishes what you want it to accomplish, and we know this by faith that your word is going out and that hearts are being convicted right now. And as this truth is going out, it's going out because of your grace. Lord, I pray that hearts will be open to receive your righteousness. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to learn more about IGM or have any questions about this podcast, feel free to reach out to us at info at integritygm.com and connect with us on Instagram at integrity underscore global and Facebook at integrity global missions. If you like our podcast, please share it and leave a review. Thank you for listening. Have a blessed day.